Welcome. Hello. Question. Is your infrastructure homogenous? Do you run multiple operating systems in your environment? Are all of your applications written in the same language? Do you have different hypervisors? Do you work in a multi-cloud environment? Um, I suspect yes is the answer to any one of those. Uh, infrastructure diversity is a reality for most enterprises, if not all enterprises. So when you think about uh, a technology like Service Mesh, you would expect that there are multiple of them. That's why there's a category of, uh, of infrastructure called Service Mesh. Now, there are maybe more than any of you here can prattle off. Uh, I suspect some of you can prattle off a, a couple, three, four, maybe five, six, not so much, or I don't know. Um, give it a shot in the chat and uh, let's see how many you can list. We'll take a look at that number later. Uh, my name is Lee Calcote. Uh, service meshes have been a focus of mine for some time. Uh, I've written a couple of books on them, um, have one coming out in a couple of weeks, and then another one coming out, who knows when. Uh, boy, books are hard. Uh, I spend a lot of time in this ecosystem, so I um, chair the CNCF's uh, SIG network, SIG network uh, along with the service mesh working group there. Um, Docker captain, among various other things. Um, if I cover too much in this talk, you want to look at the slides later. The URL there uh, is where these slides and other talks that I've given um, are posted. So you're welcome to them. Where I spend my full-time role and focus is at Layer 5. Layer 5 is a service mesh company. Um, it's also very much a service mesh community. It's a community full of um, maintainers of every service mesh, mesh project. All of the projects are represented. Um, and as such, the open source projects that the community of contribu contributors creates um, are well focused on all of the meshes. Um, you're more than welcome to join the Slack and, and be a part of the, the projects or the community. Uh, we'll talk about a couple of those projects today as we look across um, a number of different service meshes. So in an obligatory way, we take a quick look at what a service mesh is. Many different ways to capture this um, succinctly. It's a services first network. It's a sort of next gen SDN, if you will. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a network that is purpose built for empowering operators, developers, product owners, um, and it is, um, you know, um, sort of lays down proverbially at layer five, um, offers a lot of uh, assistance to applications to layer seven and of the OSI model. Uh, there's a bunch more uh, uh, introductory material to what a service mesh is inside of um, this free book. Uh, this is the one that's coming out in a couple of weeks. You can articulate the value in hard terms of what a service mesh is, um, you know, popularly, described in these four buckets, uh, fine-grained traffic control, um, the, uh, the ability to offer resiliency to your distributed systems, whether they're containerized or, or not, um, a lot of observability, sort of the three pillars of, of observability between metrics, logs, and traces, and a fair bit of security with um, you know, fairly deep authorization, application-level authorization, authentication, certificates, and encryption. Um, there's a lot in there. There's a lot to a service mesh. Um, one of those buckets of functionality that um, isn't spoken of as often, and um, some are just kind of coming to understand this, is that there's a fair bit of um, business logic or application logic that can be facilitated by a service mesh. Um, we'll give some examples of that later in this talk, but it's certainly an interesting um, area. There's a lot of power in a mesh, a lot of power in the network, and I think you can begin to expect more from your infrastructure, uh, particularly when a service mesh is present. <clears throat> On the softer side of the value that a service mesh offers is that of empowering different personas, different teams. 
I'm empowering them, yes, with smarter infrastructure, more controllable, um, a lot of things, but but also to help these individual roles decouple from one another a bit so that they become somewhat more empowered and are able to iterate independently and move more quickly. Operators don't necessarily have to ask a developer to change the logic uh, of, for, I don't know, the number of retries that are um, happening from one service to the next in the, extent, in the, in the event of a failure. <clears throat> Developers don't have to be concerned with implementing retries. I'm kind of choosing retries, I guess, here is the example. Um, and so they, the developers can move faster toward business logic. Turns out um, product owners are enabled to manipulate business logic. The mesh can uh, do deep packet inspection, and not just inspection, but packet manipulation. There's a lot that can be done um, inside, of, uh, inside of a service mesh. Um, the product owner can uh, change the pricing structure of a SaaS offering using a service mesh. Um, a lot of things, but we'll, again, we'll get to an example or two. Uh, there are any number, well, I guess we, we said there, there's a, quite a few service meshes. It's a bit meshy out there. There are um, 20 or more, depends on how you count. Depends on if you count um, all of the flavors and offerings of, of Istio, for example, um, or not. And, and uh, there's a landscape that is one of the projects of the Service Mesh community. The Service Mesh landscape is rather detailed and captures um, you know, the governance model and the, the language and, and a variety of other facts about Service Meshes. Uh, I've pulled out a few here, really, uh, to just highlight some of their strengths. Um, this is not exhaustive of their strengths, nor is it exhaustive of all of the meshes, but um, Linkerd has been um, uh, known to deliver value quickly. It's also been known to be performant, in part by its choice of language, Rust as its language for implementing the data plane in Linkerd. Istio's um, uh, a larger or the largest of the projects in terms of scope of functionality. It's also been historically fairly extensible. Um, that has regressed some uh, recently. Some of that extensibility has been, well, hmm, temporarily traded in and now being brought back. Um, and so... Yeah, so this statement still stands. Um, the project has been, yeah, yeah anyway. So um, console, uh, one of its strengths is that it supports uh, deployments on Kubernetes or um, uh, running workloads and services on the console service mesh, both in Kubernetes environments and in, uh, off Kubernetes, which is really important. Nginx service mesh was just announced last week. Um, the data plane that's used for the Nginx service mesh is Nginx plus, more Nginx is um, data, uh, proxy. And so it, the part of its strength is its tight interoperation with that very popular proxy. Network service mesh is the network engineer's service mesh, if you will. Um, it's the only one that f um, focuses on lower level concerns. Um, so uh, each of these has <clears throat> different but similar architectures. So we'll talk about their similarities and then look at their differences. Um, similarly, uh, every service mesh that's out there uh, breaks down into really three high-level components. A data plane. This is where, you're, where you will find the uh, proxies that comprise the mesh and comprise the data plane. Some service meshes uh, have built-in um, gateways, both for ingress and egress. Egress is oftentimes used for security purposes, while ingress is used often for uh, load balancing, traffic redirection, um, a number of things. The, uh, and that's where a lot of heavy lifting is done inside the data plane. In the control plane, this, this is <clears throat> the set of components that are service mesh specific. Um, they handle, commonly they handle logic like um, integrating with the underlying platform. A lot of times that's Kubernetes, um, can be other systems. Um, it facilitates um, integration with 
uh, service discovery systems. Um, really, it's um, a set of components that perform configuration management for the proxies in the data plane. Um, and depending upon which service mesh you're talking about, those control planes might bring a little more functionality than the other. Um, we're starting to see Prometheus and Grafana, um, Jaeger, some kind of commonly packaged uh, open source components for telemetry uh, bundled into the control plane. Um, there's a third layer here, which is a management plane that um, does any number of things. There are a few of these out there. And uh, th they will, again, um, differ in their functionality, but oftentimes provide configuration management um, across meshes, uh, or maybe facilitate the integration and manipulation of business logic that we were referring to earlier. They'll oftentimes, they might do performance management or help you there, uh, multi-mesh federation, um, uh, some log some work uh, might have a workflow engine or, or offer up policies for when what to do during um, continuous integration and and sort of traffic splitting and just really it really any number of use cases here so that was sort of how um, service meshes are similar here's how uh, architecturally they they can be somewhat different this is an older view of Istio as of a couple of releases ago. Um, conceptually not a lot different um, in its latest release, but, uh, but given the time and the number of meshes to talk about, we won't necessarily explain uh, all of these components. Um, all that I'll highlight here is that Istio uh, um, implements a popular um, data plane uh, service proxy deployment style, and that is of sidecarring the proxy to each individual application container. Um, some meshes implement this, um, while others don't. Uh, console is one that does implement um, sidecar or does a proxy, uh, sorry, sidecar proxies to the application container. Actually, both Istio and Envoy support, I'm sorry, Istio and Console support Envoy as their out-of-the-box proxy. Um, console doesn't support swapping out Envoy, while <clears throat> Istio, well, how should I say this? Um, like I said, Istio's, one of its strengths is extensibility, and there are uh, three or four, exa four examples now of uh, Envoy being displaced in an Istio deployment with a different proxy. Um, come see me if you're interested in learning more there. Um, we'll call out one interesting thing here that's not specific to console, but is becoming um, another popular capability of a service mesh, and that is the ability to run custom network filters um, inside of the data plane. Um, there's a web assembly is a technology that helps um, facilitate the dynamically injecting and kind of reloading custom filters for performing some of that intelligence that we were referring to earlier. A lot of use cases for these, so we'll, we'll look at that more. Linkerd, um, again, a control plane, a data plane, um, same model in terms of um, proxy, uh, sidecarring proxies. I noted before this one was written in Rust. This one doesn't use Envoy, um, but it was written, uh, this proxy was written, the Linkerd proxy, uh, purposefully written for um, the, the purpose of uh, being a, uh, in a service mesh data plane. So not, not designed to be general purpose, but, but to be used um, here. Octarine is a security-centric um, service mesh. Actually, Octarine, um, the company, was recently acquired by uh, VMware, and I think some of these components are beginning to form part of what Tanzu service mesh is. Um, there are different deployment models for service meshes. So we just talked about, um, th there's a bunch of different deployment models. We're not going to talk about them all. Uh, one of the ones that we had mentioned was the sidecarring your proxy in that model of having a lot of proxies in your data plane. There are other ways uh, that people uh, run service meshes or um, other journeys that they take on their path to running a full-blown service mesh. A lot of times, in many environments, 
the initial path, the initial step that people will take is with a gateway, an ingress gateway, or otherwise a, um, a load balancer and a reverse proxy. There's a lot that can be done there. There's, um, you can begin to break down your monolith um, with a proxy out in front. Um, over time, as you want to have resiliency within your systems, more um, visibility, um, more security, you start to have more proxies. Eventually, you, you have a lot of proxies. Eventually, you need a control plane and you wind up with a service mesh. Um, and then when you're serious and you're running your service mesh well, or you want to know how to run it well, you bring in a management plane. One of the models um, is a proxy per node or a, a daemon, um, an agent per node, a daemon set, if you will, which is a model in which there's only one reverse proxy per node. Um, there are pros and cons to this model. Uh, different meshes have implemented it. Um, there are other models. This short uh, book that I mentioned before will take you through them if you're interested. It's a free book. So. But uh, suffice to say, because there are uh, so many service meshes out there, there are uh, standards, uh, specifications, abstractions that have come about. Um, one of those is the service mesh interface. If you're familiar with CNI or CSI, uh, then and not the TV show, I guess, uh, that you would be familiar with, or you would have a, con a conceptual understanding for the mission and goal of SMI, which is to provide, um, a low, you know, more or less a lowest common denominator um, set of uh, APIs um, that uh, that provide things like traffic splitting, um, traffic metrics um, to, for you for your organization or you to integrate with as a layer of abstraction across which any given service mesh may plug in behind. And so um, that's what SMI is um, very in brief about. SMP, Service Mesh Performance, is uh, about uh, helping you manage the um, overhead of your mesh, helping you squeeze as much value out of it, helping you characterize that in a way in which is repeatable, that you can um, perform benchmarks, compare your uh, performance to like meshes, to, um, to different service mesh deployments in different organizations, so that you can gauge um, how efficiently and how well you're running your infrastructure, how much value you're deriving from your infrastructure. Um, the third spec here is, or abstraction here is um, dubbed Hamlet. It's um, stewarded by uh, VMware. It is for, uh, it's an abstraction for defining um, mechanics by APIs and mechanics by which you can exchange service catalogs from between different meshes. So from one mesh to the other, whether that's the same type of service mesh or not. So a bit more about SMP. Um, I was describing this a moment ago. You can visit the URL. It'll give you a short demo. Um, of the, this spec and what it looks like in its canonical implementation. Um, its canonical implementation is done in Meshery. We'll talk about Meshery more. The spec itself is vendor neutral. It's proposed for adoption into the CNCF. It's being currently advanced inside of a CNCF working group for service meshes. Um, and it facilitates a number of things. My hope is that it will facilitate um, MeshMark, and that MeshMark will help people easily understand um, the value that, that they're deriving from their service mesh. A lot of con considerations around um, performance, um, questions and concerns, and really like variables to track um, as you run a service mesh. Uh, particularly, the more that you use it, the more that you're going to want to understand um, its, mecha its mechanics, its overhead um, in terms of memory and CPU and latency and throughput and other things. There's a lot of power in there. And you know, naturally, the more that you ask of a mesh or the more that you ask of anything, um, the more um, resources that it might, it might take. And, th and there's no way that I can summarize um, all of how that, uh, all of those considerations um, quickly but again, maybe suffice to say that um, an index uh, like MeshMark 
would be a, an easy way for most of us to understand um, how to operate their, your service mesh well. And so um, part of then what it facilitates is uh, an understanding in, uh, of comparing um, the different network functions that you can employ in a mesh. So things like context-based routing, um, different types of load balancing, balancing algorithms or path-based routing. How much do these affect you? How powerful are these concepts? How much time do they save you? Um, then also the, the mechanics by it. It's not just the network functions that you're, you're running, but um, the infrastructure that you're using, or the, the, the way in which you're running these. Uh, and so if you're using, you can implement, I was using retries earlier as the example, you can implement retries in your application logic inside of a client library. That'll cost you some CPU cycles, it'll cost you some memory. Um, you can have those implemented outside of your application and here in a service mesh in a sidecar proc or in a proxy, sidecar or not, um, and have that piece of infrastructure that was written specifically to do these things uh, perform those tasks and measure it, you know, how much, um, how quick it does it and how many resources it takes. The same thing as you look to implement um, custom network filters. Um, the use cases for doing that are vast, but uh, what are the, are the performance characteristics there? It's important to be able to understand those. Um, there have been some, um, well, in the Layer 5 community and in the CNCF, we've been engaged with a couple of um, academic institutions and have been um, trying to study in various environments using the SMP specification uh, what these, um, how we've been trying to characterize um, these performance character, oh, geez, trying not to use the word characteristics again, but um, how, you, how you measure and characterize um, the overhead here so that you can make intelligent decisions as to how you run your architecture, as to whether or not you want your developers to go write something uh, that you otherwise could do with the mesh and how, how quickly they could get it done versus um, the cost of doing it in your infrastructure. So, so we, I noted WebAssembly a couple of times. If it's new to you, um, know that it's a, um, well, it's a stack-based virtual machine, sort of like a, to describe it quickly and, and abuse it a little bit, it's sort of like a newfangled, a newfangled JVM, if you will. So the promise of you being able to compile to WebAssembly as a target is nice because there are you know, 40 something languages supported and um, its execution environments can be in the web browser. Um, in our case, it can be in the um, data plane, in a proxy. Um, it has excellent performance and security characteristics and so is growing in popularity. Um, there's an example here that just looking at the, the time, we, we don't have time to really go through. Uh, but th this example is one that you can look up, and it's intended to be a playground for people to get familiar with WebAssembly filters and to see what they're capable of. This particular example uses console. And um, on that, we should talk a little bit about meshery. Uh, which is a service mesh management plane. Um, it, it was um, interoperable with SMI when SMI was announced. Um, it is also the canonical implementation of SMP. And it participates, in, it's being donated to the CNCF, it participates in um, a few other programs. It, as a management plane, it does a few things. It does um, performance management that we've been talking about some. Yes, that you can use that to compare the performance between different service meshes. That's one thing you could do. You can do that. You can use it to baseline your environment and um, look at how changes over time affect uh, the performance of your systems, of your service mesh. Um, it, whether that's a new release of a mesh or you changing the configuration of the service mesh or releasing a new version of your workloads on top of the mesh, um, it's an ongoing concern 
Um, it, Meshery lets you compare uh, overhead between different tests that you run. It also um, has built in best practices for how to configure each of the service meshes that it supports. So Meshery will hopefully help you run your infrastructure with confidence. Um, it will tell you when you're, you're doing things according to best practice or not. Um, this, actually, I guess I'll say this, that uh, part of the, the other book that, that I'm authoring on service mesh patterns, uh, it'll have, the first book will have 30 patterns, and Meshery will be the tool that um, provides example of each of those 30 patterns. So shortly, um, the community uh, behind Meshery is working on oh, uh, providing support to uh, let you deploy um, in those patterns quickly those best pat practice patterns. So, Meshery is also the official tool um, that the SMI project uses for verifying conformance um, as to whether or not a given service mesh is conformant with the SMI specifications. And so Meshery does this by, um, well, automating the provisioning of eight different types of service meshes and the deployment of a sample application, the generation of load of requests against that sample app, the measuring of it, and then finally a number of assertions where it tests and confirms whether or not a given mesh is, continues, well, is or continues to be conformant with SMI. And so Meshery's architecture um, looks like this. Uh, so the management plane lays down um, as a layer on top and across any, any type of service mesh. Well, maybe I shouldn't say any type, but um, currently um, eight of them. So more than any other project or product available today. And it also be, has begun to facilitate uh, deployment of WebAssembly filters. So, so good. Well, uh, I mentioned before, there's just a lot of activities going on inside of this community. Um, jump into the Slack, you'll find it's, it's a warm and welcoming community. If not there, then join us in the CNCF and the Service Mesh Working Group. Um, there's a few initiatives going on that we didn't speak about today, uh, but I'm hoping that this talk served the purpose of enlightening you to the fact that there's a lot of, me that it's meshy out there. Uh, and that um, there are a number of tools that have been created to help with, help you navigate those waters. So, very good, I will be in chat. Um, thanks a bunch for being here, uh, bring your questions.